Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to another project video. My name is Samuel. I'm going to be your host for this video. In this project video, we are going to learn how to ingest data in in, in a event driven fashion. That is right, event driven fashion. Meaning any time new files are added on S3 raw zone, right? We will essentially use S3 events to push all these events coming real time into an Amazon SQS queue where the items are nicely buffered, right? Now, using glue job, we are gonna pull the Amazon SQS queue, grab the messages, read the data as a glue data frame or a spark data frame, perform upsert slash insert slash bulk insert on a hoodie transactional data lake. So we are gonna learn all of this in this video. Anything that, any failure happens during this process, those messages will land up in the dead letter queue. Meaning later on, you can point those failed events back to the source queue through something called DLQ redraft policy. So this is what we're gonna build in this project video. Um, you know, again, all these events are coming into S3, which means new files are being uploaded. We are gonna uh, direct all these events into an SQS queue. And using glue job, we are going to grab those messages into a batch uh, fashion and then probably ingest that into a Hori transactional data lake. Um, any failures, will uh, those events will end up in a dead letter queue. So I hope you guys are excited. Now let's get started. All right, now it's time that we get started with the project. So the first thing that we need is an S3 bucket. So I'm assuming you have an S3 bucket where you want to try this lab out. If you don't have one, please go ahead and create an S3 bucket. I am going to be using this particular S3 bucket, JT Data Team Sandbox QA Dev. This is the bucket that I'm going to be using. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an SQS queue. Remember, I said that we're going to push all the events into an SQS, so we need an SQS queue. So I'm heading on to a Amazon SQS page and I'm going to click on Create Queue. For this demo, I'm going to be using the customer data. So I'm going to name this uh, uh, a queue as customer, customer customer I can just name it customer queue that's all right and then leave everything to default click on create queue now we need to add a policy so that uh, you know we can push this event into an SQS queue so back into my AW uh, my code editor I have this policy all you need to do in this policy guys change the uh, put your queue ARN over here so I'm gonna do that right now in front of you so copy this ARN and I'll be replacing this over here. Put your AWS account ID here and then put your bucket name over here. Now I will copy this. Then uh, once I'm done with that, so now I'll head over to the access policy, click on the edit button, scroll down, paste this in and then click on save. So the step two is complete. So step one, S3 bucket, step two, create an SQS queue. Now step three is we need to create uh, an event notification, meaning anytime you put something in S3, you wanna broadcast that into an SQS queue. So let's take a look at that part. Now, what I need to do is I'm gonna come to the S3 bucket, click on properties and scroll down until I see something called uh, create notification, which should be somewhere here, here, event notification. Click on create event notification. I'm gonna say, customer uh, data processing. Again, you can name it anything. I would like to give a prefix. So my prefix will be raw and then customers. Just wanna make sure uh, the way I, I publish the data. Yeah, raw and then customers. So uh, what I'm saying is, I'm saying, hey, hey guys, uh, send events and look for events into this particular folder, right? That's what I'm trying to say. I'll be using the suffix as JSON. I'm only interested in JSON data because I'm, I'm publishing JSON data. I'm going to be creating on put, which means anytime a new file is created, I would like to receive that event so that I can process that with glue. All of that looks fantastic. Now come to SQSQ on the destination part and then select uh, your queue. That is customer queue. Click on save changes. And now, as you can see, successfully, you have configured event, meaning now anytime data is inserted into this particular folder, uh, it will basically forward that into an Amazon SQS queue. Now let's verify that process. Now you will be given a Python file, which is called datagen.py, which will generate some fake data onto S3. So again, I'm sharing my screen. Again, uh, make sure you put your AWS access secret and region and the bucket name over here. Again, very simple file. All this Python file does is basically publishes or does a put file on the S3, okay? So right now, um, just make sure that I do not have any folders or any files here. Okay, nothing, right? So now I'm gonna right click and click on run. 
and you can see some data was published right now if i refresh uh, again if you can see uh, raw folder custom mars and then i have some uh, data right if i go to the sqsq i should be seeing that as you can see that five messages uh, came over here i can come on i can actually show you by cl clicking on poll for messages and here you can see that event successfully came into amazon sqsq Fantastic. Now the last part is processing that using glue. Let me show you that part. Now the glue job is one of the most important part of the project, which is going to pull the queue and, and read messages and, and process the data and uh, perform an upsert on a Houdini transactional data lake. Let's take a look at the code. All right, back to my screen. Here I have imports. So again, I don't need to explain you anything here. Here I'm creating a Spark session. Here I'm creating a glue context. Again, pretty straightforward. Now I have um, four functions, uh, actually three function and one class. I have a class called Polar. This basically does all the action related to the SQS. So if you open up the Polar class, I have two methods that is get message and commit. Uh, get message is going to get the messages from the queue and the commit is going to basically the messages that you are already processed is going to prune or delete them from the queue because you already processed that. So uh, again, as you can see, get messages takes a batch size. You can configure the batch size. The batch size is set to 10 in the constructor, right? Hopefully made sense. Read data from S3. Uh, this again takes um, the path, uh, as you can see over here, and then all it does is basically returns, uh, converts the glue data frame into a Spark data frame. Uh, then I have a method called absurd hoodie table. Now let's take a look at the function. So here you will put your queue URL. So I'm gonna go to the Amazon SQS, and this is the queue URL. I'm gonna insert this queue URL over here on line 261. Polar, creating an instance of class Polar, providing in the URL. While true, keep listening. Messages, get the messages from the queue. If um, if you do not have messages, break, which means I do not have any more messages to process. Else, I invoke a function called process message. Inside the process message, what I do is basically I iterate over the message. I create an S3 file. Uh, and then basically all the S3 files, I, I append it into an array called batch files. And if the batch file is not none, I create um, a Spark data frame object. I print the Spark data frame, and then I'm performing an upsert on a hoodie transactional data lake, where my table is customer record ID. The, that is the primary key is customer ID. Timestamp is uh, pre-com key is used for D2 purposes. So I'm using a timestamp table type as copy on write, uh, partition as state, uh, method as upsert. Again, pretty straightforward. So that is the code. Hopefully this code makes sense. Now let's uh, do the glue job part, right? So now come to glue and click on uh, Spark script editor. I've already done that. Now what I want to do is I want to copy paste this code that I wrote. Dump it over here. Click on save. Uh, now the job details part. Just want to make sure that you guys know the settings. Um, type as Spark. Glue version is 4.0. Language is uh, Python G1 X. You can use two workers. It's more than enough uh, unless you are doing some crazy amount of processing, then you can uh, put like more workers or put it to auto scaling. Anyways, um, these are important, the, sp uh, the sp job parameters. Data lake format as sorry, configuration, you gotta provide this uh, conf. Again, this is given in the code as well and on the GitHub section. So now, what are we waiting for? Let's rock and roll, right? Let's run this and see if it works. Um, so before I do that, I have like five uh, events on, on, on the queue. Uh, where is my glue job? All right. So I'm about to run the job. My job has been started. As you can see, it's in the running state. I'm going to resume uh, once the job is complete. Okay. Uh, just wanted to show you, you know, see the job is running, right? And if I go to the CloudWatch, as you can see, uh, we are getting these part data frame. So we are reading these messages from the SQSQ. Uh, if I refresh over here, uh, as you can see, now there are five messages. So the number of messages uh, are going down, as you can see. Again, you can configure and play with the batch size if needed. Um, excuse me. At this point, I assume that, uh, again, as you can see, it is still processing. So once this is done, it's going to perform upsert on a hoodie transactional data lake. So let's go to S3 and see if we do see a silver zone. Oh yeah, we do see a silver zone and there you can see, we see Hori metadata, here we see some um, um, state and probably we should be seeing some base file as well, if I go back. Again, the job is still running, so might take about uh, some time. So here you can see some parquet files, the Hori metadata. So I would conclude it, it's working flawlessly, right? Uh, and you can adopt this solution at your company or at your firm uh, if needed. Uh, if you really like the video and the content, please make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. And um, uh, if you have any other question, please let me know your question in the comment section below. 
with that being said keep smiling keep programming and i'm gonna see you in the upcoming next videos